Hi everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning to discuss the benefits of drone services in construction. I'm Stephanie Wilson and I'll be your host for today's webcast. Before we get started, I want to go over a few things with you. First, this webinar is being recorded and it will be sent to you via email. If you can't stay for the entire discussion, no need to worry, you can view it later. We would also like to encourage a discussion during this webinar, so if you have questions, please submit them in the chat box located on the right side of your screen. And last, we do have a few poll questions during today's webinar, which we ask that you participate in. They're easy, multiple choice questions, and there are no right or wrong answers. We can address those answers when they come up, and it'll help add to our discussion. Now that we've covered the details for today's, web, today's webcast, let's move on to the agenda. We'll start with a quick introduction of today's speakers and cover a little bit about their background and experience in the industry. Then we'll jump into the drone discussion and talk about how drones can be used during construction. We'll end with 10 minutes left for a question and answer session. Now, here's our first speaker, Adam Monk. Yeah, thank you, Stephanie. Uh, thanks for joining everybody. Uh, my name is Adam Monk. I'm the National Director for BIM Services here at ARC. I've spent the uh, better part of my career in the AEC market the past 10, 12 years um, uh, in the software sector from working with firms like Graphisoft um, and uh, AutoCAD, Navisworks uh, with the Autodesk uh, software solutions as well. Um, we have a really special guest here as well. Um, that I'd like to introduce here um, on the next slide. We have uh, Jeff Roy joining us. He is our strategic partner uh, with the drone services launch here with ARC. Uh, Jeff has a multitude of experiences with, with drones. He spent 15 years in the technology and leadership field. Uh, kind of a, a fun fact about Jeff here. Uh, he, he's founded and, and managed a successful technology consulting firm uh, where they implemented uh, innovative applications for BIM solutions. So uh, Jeff, did I miss anything there on your introduction or did you want to say a couple things as well? I think you did great. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate that. Right. Perfect. Thanks, Adam and Jeff. Now that we know a little bit about our speakers, we want to know some more about our audience and we'll jump into the first few polls. Our first poll, we wanna know what your role is within your company. Are you an architect, an engineer, a project manager, a general contractor, BIM or VDC manager? I'll leave this up for a few seconds so everyone can check the one that applies to them. So far it's heavy on the general contractor and the BIM or VDC manager side. A few architects and engineers, and we got our first project manager. I'll leave it up for just a few more seconds. It looks like architects are taking the lead. And go ahead and submit your question, your response. I'm gonna close the question right now. And thank you for everyone who participated. Looks like the project managers came out ahead. Our next poll that we want to launch for you guys is just to learn about what industry you're in. Um, this will help us when we're talking today to make sure we're speaking um, in terms that you guys understand and kind of, you know, make it geared more towards our audience. And so far, the industry that's taken the lead is engineering. Uh, some owners and property managers, construction. Engineering is taking a big lead. And thanks to everyone who's participating. It looks like it's about even with architects and construction. And I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll. I appreciate those who participated. And the last question before we jump into our discussion is, we wanna know what services most interest you when it comes to drones. Are you interested in job site progress tracking? Do you wanna use your deliverables for marketing? 
Are you interested in inspection and safety, aerial mapping, LIDAR? Um, what interests you? We'll be covering all of these topics today, um, but based on your answers, we may spend a little bit more time on certain subjects. Um, looks like it's even across the board right now. I'll give you guys a few more seconds to go ahead and send in your responses. Job site progress tracking is taking a big lead followed closely behind by inspection and safety. Um, thanks you guys, we appreciate you participating in these polls. And with that being said, I'll go ahead and let Jeff kick off our discussion. Okay, well thank you Stephanie, thank you Adam for the introduction. On behalf of Precision Hawk, we are really excited to launch this partnership together with ARC, um, two of our leading companies within our respective fields. Um, and most of you are aware there are various types of drones out there. However, you know, many of the smaller ones you see at your local store are not used for commercial purposes. The drones you see here are made by DGI, one of one of our strategic partners as well. Um, here is the, the Phantom 4 Pro, the M200, M210, and other uh, Matrice 600. The, the Phantom is a great tool for your basic photogrammetry video related requirements, and this is what we use for really the job site progress tracking and monitoring, and also I think for your safety inspections, which we can get to in a little bit. Um, the M200 and the M210 have a bigger payload capacity, and typically we're using these when capturing thermal data for facility condition assessment, facade inspections, et cetera. And the larger M600 has a much larger payload and carries our LiDAR sensing um, and hyperspectral sensors. And Adam will get into a few of these sensors in a few minutes. Um, yeah, absolutely. Just so, just so everyone has a has a, I think maybe a clearer picture. The the largest payload one there on the screen is is the drone that has the red um, kind of contours to it. Is that is that right? Correct. That's the Matri 600. Perfect. Perfect. And that carries uh, the the lidar sensors and the thermal imaging sensors. Is that right? Lidar hyperspectral the thermal we typically carry on the M200 or M210. Okay. We can also go on the M200. Very good. All right. So uh, the next few slides here, uh, uh, Jeff is going to jump into what we've found in the industry to to uh, be kind of the the biggest pain points um, from our clients in in servicing their drone needs from what they do today currently to being able to utilize drones efficiently uh, to be able to help solve their needs so we're going to go through uh, i think we got four uh the next four slides here will pertain to some of the client uh, pain points that we found in the industry and then on the back end of that we're going to hop into how we actually solve those pain points uh, through the uses of, of our drone technology. Yeah. So on the on the mapping, uh, some of the key things that Adam just mentioned is, is the mapping, uh, the safety and project performance, which are all key points you guys um, answered in the polls as well. Um, in regards to the mapping here, the key thing here is I know every project now, especially with the GCs and even project managers, is, is getting um, you know maximizing your revenue and profits on the project. So drone-based uh, mapping and or Surveying, um, if you're a surveyor, um, really can be captured. You're capturing data in 50, 60 percent less time than your traditional methods today. So it's not the photogrammetry-based mapping and/or lidar-based mapping is not replacing your, um, you know, stationary fixed ground laser scanners, um, but it's giving you that overall survey, topographical surveys. The lidar sensors can penetrate through vegetation. Some of you are probably aware. Um, it's really a great additional tool for surveyors to use and provide more powerful data to their end customers. Um, so companies like ourselves, we are not licensed surveyors. We are not doing surveys. Um, we are simply providing the drone and the service um, to provide this tool um, to enhance your deliverables to your end customers and give your customers better data. Um, but the time to process data is really still the same as traditional, um, but the collection of data is a much quicker and of, of a much higher quality um, across the board. Um, on the next slide, we'll talk about site safety, and there are a few aspects here. One aspect can be for site security. Um, here we're using a tethered drone solutions um, across the market um, that we're working with, and tethered solutions are great for job site security. Um, inside the tether, there's a data cable which feeds into the security company's software, 
and the drone can cover above the project site on a continual basis. So we're seeing this, um, we're carrying the M210 with the thermal and visual camera and also Z30 camera, which has a zoom on it. Um, this tethered drone is, is based near the, the construction security site office. Um, it can be used to monitor your, your high cost items on site at night um, for intruders um, and theft from the site. On the safety aspect, you know, myself being an architect, I strongly believe in the drones being a great tool for the site safety manager um, to use on his morning walkthroughs or even before doing the walkthrough to make sure there are no dangers present before the crew takes to the site for a few days for the day's work ahead. Um, for a couple of thousand dollars, this is really a great tool to have on the job site. Just as you guys uh, work with ARC today on having the copy machines, phones, et cetera, and your job site trailers, you know, I strongly believe that every site safety manager should should have a, a drone, can be the Phantom 4 Pro, on site just to check if there was severe weather the night before, um, to fly that site again before putting um, all of your crew in harm's way um, during the working day. Um, yeah, that, Jeff, I think that's that's great information. Um, as you can see, the, the statistics that we have on there are a couple years old, but when when we have folks, you know, uh, passing away and, and, and dying on the job sites, uh, you know, 2015 was 937 in, in the construction world. Um, you know, one, one is too many. And, uh, you know, I, I think if, if using this drone service can help, you know, uh, companies, uh, contractors, GCs save people's lives, uh, that, that's, that's really important to take a look at. And, and really consider as a factor of, of a working environment, so. And then moving on, um, for the cost overruns and, and project delays, I think are two other big um, important issues for all the GCs on, on the call here and, and even the, the B2C managers. You know, we're all trying to use different tools, different technology to, to deliver projects um, better and faster and safer. And I think the drone is just another tool to have on that job site. It's not an expensive tool. Um, and here, having drones on site for weekly or biweekly or monthly progress monitoring can really go a long way in bringing, bringing the, the visibility to the project before it's too late and costs are escalated for, un, for unnecessary reasons. Um, the perspectives and the visual imagery you can capture with a drone are unlike anything you can get with a webcam, with a tower cam. Um, really, you can fly that drone on site and just be taking that different imagery from different perspectives and also using that tool with your project superintendent and even back in the office where you can use it for educational purposes, uh, mentoring and training your, your new recruits on what to look for in a job, using that for lessons learned and how to apply that to future projects. So um, I think it's really powerful. The, the, this slide and the next slide of cost overruns and delays are really running the same, but how you can learn from this this information and, and the, the value of the drone-based imagery is really in the data itself and how we use that in the future. And, and over time, as we start to collect data on more and more projects, as you guys as, as companies do that, you can really start to look at lessons learned in two, three years' time with machine learning. That's a big topic as well. And with the BIM models and how you can incorporate all this data together, um, I think is really powerful. And um, again, I think the cost point, we know every project is super sensitive to budgets. Um, if it's not budgeted when the bid went in a couple of years ago, perhaps there's no budget today for a couple thousand dollars. Um, I think there is, and I think it's foolish to think that um, having better imagery um, and data, even for potential future claims and mitigation, um, the cost that companies spend on that when defending themselves, if you have this imagery, um, I think that mitigates a lot of that, um, those costs down the road. So. Sure, sure, absolutely. No, great, excellent points, Chef. So, where do we fit in into uh, with drones into the you know a, a client's infrastructure life cycle for a project, so to speak? We've outlined a few from from uh, the information we've got from our our clients here in the past, and really, you can see we we have a, a multitude of of uh, entry points from planning, design build operations and maintenance and even reinvest, uh, reinvest or, or divest um, from the perspective of a, of a current building. Are you going to be able to reuse that or you know, do you need to decom decommission? And how do you get to uh, you know, roofs that, uh, on a building that might be 100 years old and, 
and uh, you know it, it might not be safe to, to access uh, the roof. So uh, all of these things come into play and and are big factors. Uh, you can see you know that the drone services really can fit in into almost any project phase uh, with the ability to help with mapping, progress reporting. Uh, photogrammetry, video services, LIDAR, and we'll jump into these in, in a little bit more detail here um, uh, in, in just a few different slides. But really the overall gist here is we're collecting the data for you, we're analyzing that in whatever manner you'd like that to happen and, and you know, uh, delivering that on the back end to you as, as a client with uh, the, the visualization pieces. Now, ARC is a single source national provider of drone services now, and we're so excited and happy to have this service to our clients available. Uh, we have over 15,000 pilots available uh, in our network uh, nationally. So what this does is this really allows us to be able to uh, deploy services after we've vetted the site and information um, to uh, to be able to deploy these folks, uh, these pilots, within a 24 to 48 hour uh, time frame. So we can have very quick, uh, active job sites where you might need as a client someone there in, in 24 to 48 hours. We can most certainly make that happen with the availability of, of all of our pilots that we do have access to. Uh, this next step for, for uh, safety and compliance operations, this is one of my favorite parts. Um, I think this, this speaks highly to what, what we have done as a company to ensure our success for our clients, is that all the pilots are, are licensed from an FAA standpoint, certified, insured, bonded. So we, you guys know as, as our clients that we're sending licensed, insured individuals to your job site. Um, so you have that that insurance and and uh, um, uh, ability to understand and know that you know it's it's not somebody that bought bought a, a drone from Best Buy and, and is just showing up on your job site and may have never flown. Jeff, what what would you say? Kind of the average pilot has uh, that we utilize um, a, as a background as far as you know, years of service and, and, and flights or per flight, what, what kind of background do most of our pilots have on average? Most of the pilots will have at least, you know, three to five years experience, especially the ones that are doing your, just your traditional um, photogrammetry based things. Uh, the thermal and LIDAR are more specialist related and that's um, working with our team at Precision Hawk and they, re they require, so they're typically, um, you know, small manned aircraft pilots that have a drone, the Part 107 license as well, that can support those just because you're carrying uh, much more expensive sensors um, and getting much much more data as far as the detailed data, the the accuracies of the data with LIDAR, you know, which is down to one to three centimeters. Sure. Um, photogrammetry is seven to 10 centimeters. Um, so different things are different requirements. So. Yeah, so, so there's a, another level of expertise there when we get into, the thermal capabilities, LIDAR capabilities that we use specialized, specialized pilots for that. So that, that's fantastic. Uh, this, this here, we have many applications that we can use in, uh, for drone services with getting into the different sensors. Um, but you can see some of, the, some of the most common requests here from an industry standpoint that we get is anything from roofing inspections, you know, working with home builders, uh, property management firms for progress reporting, photo, video reports, um, and then getting into the LIDAR and, and mapping services. Um, that's really special because we can really get in from that LIDAR um, uh, information, uh, take that point cloud data, uh, be able to develop uh, as-built or existing conditions, CAD drawing, or even take it to the next level and develop your 3D model. So. Uh, all really good good uh, information that uh, that you can utilize from the drone services. And here's just kind of a snippet of of some different sensors here um, that uh, that are available for use. Um, so most commonly, uh, we use the the camera, um, uh, be able to take pictures, of course, video data capture. So we'll be able to. Do, 
I shoot, uh, uh, you know, anywhere from uh, one minute to 10 minute videos um, or, or greater, um, depending on the, the flight time and, and information that, <clears throat> excuse me, information that our clients would like to capture. And then, of course, the LiDAR technologies, which I covered a little bit, where we can really get in and, and get granular with that data and, and capture the point cloud information to be able to provide drawings or, or a 3D model, and of course, thermal imaging as well. So those are typically kind of the most common ones that we see. All right, Jeff, well, let's, uh, let's get a little bit more granular here and kind of jump into some of the specifics of um, the services that we offer and how they apply to the industry. Okay, thanks, Adam. Um, here's just an aerial image of a, you know, city, town, uh, to the university campus. Um, this is really just can be used for marketing purposes. Um, we get the video there as well. Um, land developers we're seeing as, as big customers if they wanted to fly the land and you know show their customers uh, what that site's going to look like where their home's going to be where that you know commercial development's going to be um, really powerful tool that gives you better um, better imagery than you're going to get from your your manned aircraft flyovers I know a lot of the bigger GCs will hire the manned aircraft to fly over they're flying at 10,000 feet or 5,000 feet you know we're flying at 100 to 200 feet above the site so you get just much more detailed information as far as what the existing conditions are um, for a fraction of the cost. So that's fantastic. Let me go to the next slide here for you. And this is one um, really for the for those interested in safety and job site progress monitoring. Again, to have um, we don't want you to have your you know, all general contractors have a difficulty now in hiring staff and, and skilled labor. Um, there's no reason to have your engineer, project manager, construction manager out on site flying the drone. Um, you can use ARC services to come out there once a week, every two weeks, once a month to really capture those that progress for you. Um, if you have to capture the snap in time of you're putting up safety handrails, et cetera, and you want to capture that, that that's been installed properly. Um, again, to prevent that, uh, if there is an accident in the future, you're preventing um, OSHA from coming in there and you guys spending your time going back in time trying to figure out if it's been proper or not. So um, I think for you know a few hundred dollars every visit, I think it's worth it for capturing that that information. Yeah, absolutely. And and Jeff, I, I think one thing too here, and I'll, I'll go to the next slide because it's similar information here for, for job site reporting and, and progress monitoring. But I, I wanted to bring up too is is I know that in the past, um, because it, it was the only technology available at the time, but uh, you know, these firms are, have set up uh, um, kind of a, a single source shot where they're setting up one camera or maybe two cameras. Um, to try to capture their entire job site uh, and, and do these uh, progress reports. But that that also in lies a, a lot of problems, right? Because you have to send up people to uh, A, install the cameras, uh, monitor the cameras. How does that, you know, who's who gets the, the information back? Where does that tie into? Um, and, and plus just the maintenance of, of uh, operating the camera. What happens if it, you know, your cameras just fail, um, you know, something comes unplugged. So uh, those are all really big factors to keep in mind. Whereas, you know, we bring on our drone services. We're there for, for uh, you know, an hour or two hours and produce what you need real time and, and deliver that back to you. So. And this, and this here is an, Going into explaining, really, this is at this is at UNC Chapel Hill. Um, and they're they're happy to share this, um, but this is usually used for tracking the progress that we're flying monthly flights for them. But also for the contractor, you know, they want to make sure that the contractor, for example, is only disturbing the areas that he set out um, to disturb during the construction progress. So, as you can see there, there's a, a practice football soccer field on the side for the laydown areas. You know, that has to be re replaced back to the condition it was in before they started the construction. So for contractors to protect themselves from capturing this data pre-construction and post-construction, they can prove and show that they did not 
um, disturbed unnecessary areas and, and not have to pay for that as well. So, and here we can link this eventually, those that are using BIM um, can link this into their schedule. So it could be if you're talking 3D, 4D and using the BIM services, um, just taking this imagery and if it's if you want to get into more detail then fly LiDAR over this, you can then lay that LiDAR point clouds over your BIM models and see um, progress as planned versus actual. And you can also see it though, just with photogrammetry. Um, I think there's a good comparison where your project should be and where it's at. Um, and, and again, using this for lessons learned down the road when you're training your staff in-house or how you do lay down areas in the future or how you do your crane placement for those, those complex construction sites. Um, this gives your schedulers, you know, really good information that they can look at how the cranes are going to move and, and how materials move in and off the site in a much more holistic way. So, yeah, fantastic. So we'll jump into uh, field measurement. So this is really neat technology. Uh, we have the option to use a few different sensors uh, within this uh, uh, field measurement field. Uh, this gives us the capability to calculate volume measurements in the field real time. Uh, this allows us to keep track of, uh, I should say, allows you to keep track of stockpile inventory, materials inventory, uh, and even runoff control as well as an example. If you have a, a, a big dirt mound and, and on your site and you need to know and understand if your folks are, are moving that dirt or if it, you're getting runoff from rain or, or what have you. So all of those are our options and uh, that we can uh, create that data for you um, with our field measurement information. The uh, contour line maps, uh, when we use the LADAR technology uh, underneath this, uh, LIDAR, excuse me, we can capture uh, job site uh, topography information, which allows us to be able to create uh, the, the to, to topography overlay there that you see, uh, and we can create the contour line mapping. This really helps out your project managers, job site managers, owners, investors, really understand your current layout of, of the job site, and if you need to make any changes moving forward or if you need to make changes today, uh, depending on how this lines up for you. And this is one of my favorite uh, uh, elements there that we can provide um, from a service standpoint. LiDAR technology is very fascinating. We can, we can dive in uh, into your job site, uh, capture information and, and data that allows us to take real, real accurate field measurements uh, without you guys having to deploy a team on the street, so to speak. So, we can do that in a, you know, essentially a quarter of the time. If you can imagine how much time it would take for someone to, to go out and, and measure all this information that, that you see on the screen from uh, just the, the sheer volume of information that we can pull. This allows us to take that point cloud data back, uh, be able to create a 3D model or just your as-built CAD drawings. Um, and we can do that in a quarter of the time than, than what, we have done previously um, from an industry standard. And Jeff, I'll let you jump into the uh, digital surface modeling here. Okay, thank you, Adam. Um, this is really a great tool. Again, this is using LiDAR um, services, but um, in a real world experience today with, with Hurricane Florence going on in our home state of North Carolina, um, where you're doing a lot of this mapping with engineering and survey companies, um, to do the erosion management, floodplain mapping, um, coastal mapping. Um, we've done a lot of things uh, with Hurricane Sandy a couple of years ago. Um, this just gives a great tool for them to monitor before and after with satellite imagery and then getting down into the detail now with the drone-based imagery. So um, a lot of the larger, even smaller engineering companies, um, survey companies, mapping companies, it's just really a great tool that you guys can add as part of your services to your customers that maybe you didn't think you could provide or don't have the resources today to provide, um, you can work together with ARC and, um, and provide this offering to your customers. So um, the next one is on security and monitoring. Again, we talked a little bit earlier about the tethered drone solution. Um, these are situations that Adam mentioned when you don't have that cameras not working on site. If you don't have any adjacent buildings to your project, if it's the Greenfield site, um, if you don't have a, you know, a place or don't want to put the towers up, put the camera on the, on the tower cranes, 
Um, the tethered solution is really a great uh, solution to have that, that can fly continuously. Um, it's got a, the, the data cable, the power cable attached to it, like I said earlier. Um, it just gives you great uh, visibility into the project and how people are performing. Again, this technology, we can start to tie into the RFID tracking. You can, with, with your employees, with your with your subcontractors, where they're at on site, um, just to really monitor and, and how, the, how the performance is being managed on site. The next one is a sample of the thermal inspection. This is for your facility condition assessments, your school districts, universities, a lot of architects and engineers that do this type of work um, for different end customers, um, you know, roofs and insuring roofs. There's, there's a big liability out there, and I think a lot of um, companies, the, the tool is there now, whereas, again, this is not replacing your thermographer, right? We have thermographers on staff, but this is giving them the, just a different imagery um, that they can go on, capture this roof before getting up on a ladder. Maybe they can see things um, with the visual and thermal before they have to put someone's life at danger if the roof is ready to collapse or if it's post-storm. Um, this gives them a really good idea. If there's a lot of water damage, flood damage, um, this thermal imagery is going to show that. So, again, it's another tool where you can have that if you're going to properties, um, apartment complexes where you have two- or three-story buildings. These roofing inspectors need to have a second person with them when they're going up on the ladder to, to watch them and be that, that safety guy. Having this drone, having thermal camera, visual camera, eliminates that risk and the need to have two resources to go and do an inspection. Again, this is a high-level inspection. Pre and when they find areas that are wrong with something, they'll maybe send then two people up there and do the detailed inspection. But again, it's just more information that you can provide at a glance to your customers Say, hey, this building has a problem. We should, you know, how you should hire us to go out and look at this and look at these details and, and figure out what the problem is before it becomes worse. And continuing on with, you know, thermal roofs. And the next slide, though, is really back to the roof inspections, but residential. Um, we have some automated roof reports that basically fly over this. It tells you all the dimensions of uh, the different slopes, the materials, the ease. Um, everything can be be done. So if you're, again, a property manager or even a school district and have a lot of different roof types, whatever, we can do a commercial roof report, we can do residential roof reports, um, but automate, automatize just by taking pictures, you can get that information for replacement costs, et cetera. And the last one is, um, along with all the static imagery, but the, the video side of things too, so the, the Phantoms, the M200s, carry the video camera on as well, and you can do a video analysis of something, and from that video, you can you can capture your, your still frames and um, take that back to the office. You can also, you know, just gives your team, you don't have to send out your expensive employees to go look at something, do an inspection. You can have the drone service go out there, fly that asset for you, get that information back to you, and you can keep that guy, you know, billable in the office um, and doing it as best and, and not wasting their time you know, spending three, four hours to drive somewhere to look at something. But um, again, if it's maybe not a, a big issue with that, with that asset, be it a cell phone tower, be it, um, you know, whatever, a roof or a building that you're, um, you can save costs and maximize your profits by sending out that drone first and foremost, and then later on deciding what needs to be done based on that imagery and to go into more detailed inspection. Okay. And that I'll pass yeah, it back to Adam. Yeah, thanks. thanks, Jeff. Yeah, no, great, great information. Really appreciate that. That's fantastic overviews there on the different sections. Um, so with our drone services, we obviously have a number of areas that we can fit into your business lines with. Um, uh, a few that, that are most common here in the industry that, that we've seen uh, folks utilize us in is number one is Project Pursuit, uh, Pursuit which allows us to collect you know, any kind of pre-bid data to support in developing a 3D model uh, from a marketing uh, standpoint, renderings, animations, things of that nature. A job site progress tracking or reporting. Uh, th this one um, uh, certainly has had seen a lot of big uptick in the industry and in being able to uh, take photos, videos, real time uh, of your site and, and really capture that data and information uh, as your progress. 
uh, continues to grow and, and moves towards its ending. So, and that can be provided on a weekly or, or monthly basis, whatever you might need. And inspections, uh, the drone services allow you to inspect, you know, hard to reach or like Jeff said earlier, some really dangerous uh, areas that you might might or might not be aware of, but you still need that information uh, from that particular particular area in your job site. So without being, you know, using the drone services that really should eliminate having to put your people, uh, your workers in any, any kind of danger. So, um, and, and, that's, and that's fantastic. Uh, move on here. Um, so, Jeff, I, you know, I, I appreciate all of your time today and, and having you on and, and join us. Um, I know that we've certainly shared a, a ton of great information today and you had a lot of great content that you went over as well. And, you know, just to kind of wrap things up, um, you know, our, our drone services can certainly help businesses out there in a number of ways. Uh, what this slide to me is really showing, uh, Jeff, and, and you can certainly jump in here with, with your comments as well as we wrap this up, but I, I think this really shows just kind of uh, how easy we've made it uh, in order for, for clients to be able to pick up and, and use drone services um, within their company. So really what this is about is collecting your, your job site data, whatever you would require, whether it's photos, videos, uh, a 3D model um, from our LiDAR technology, and being able to process that data for you uh, real time, uh, have that information back to you within, you know, the same day or, or a couple days later, uh, especially from a photo or, or video perspective. Um, and what this allows you guys to do as, as the clients on the back end is, is take action. Um, take action in real time within, you know, 24 hours, 48 hours of, of whatever that we have captured from a data perspective for you. Um, so, you know, you can create uh, in-depth progress reports, um, you know, and most importantly, I, I think when it comes to safety is, is keeping your workers safe. So I, I think that is certainly a huge aspect of, of the drone technology as well. Jeff, before we jump into uh, Q&A, did you have anything um, that you wanted to share or, or wrap up with? No, I, th I think that's great, Adam, and I'm just really thankful to be able to share this information with everybody, and um, we look forward to your, your questions, and hopefully we can help you guys um, in your businesses. Yeah, absolutely. So for the audience, um, uh, we have a little Q&A session here. I, I, uh, Stephanie, uh, if you're there, um, I apologize. I, I don't remember if we're doing Q&A here first or if we have another couple of uh, poll questions for the audience. Hey, Adam, we have a couple um, poll questions left, just two, um, and then we have some great questions that we received from the audience that we can uh, get answered for them. Um, the first poll question we have to go out of the last two is, um, have you guys used drone services before? Um, quick yes or no, should only take a few seconds. Um, and during this time, you can still submit questions into the chat box at the bottom of your screen. Um, so far, it looks like most people have not used drone services before. We'll go ahead and leave the poll up just a few more seconds to get those answers in. And we appreciate everyone responding to this one. It looks like majority haven't. Um, but hopefully now they have some information that they can use to inquire about these services. And the last question, if you were to use drone services, how often do you think you would need them? Weekly, monthly, annually, or other? And we're getting some quick responses on this one. Most people are looking at a weekly need for drone services, which is great. I'll leave the poll up a few more seconds. No one would need annually. Oh, there goes a couple people. Weekly is still the winner and monthly is taking a quick lead. Um, I appreciate everyone responding to these polls today. I'm gonna go ahead and close it and it'll be our last poll. 
And right now we'll go ahead and jump into um, some Q&A with Jeff and Adam. We did receive some questions from the audience, so let's go ahead and get those answered for them. The first question we have is, uh, one of the attendees wants to know, how accurate is the drone LIDAR compared to traditional LIDAR, traditional survey LIDAR? Adam, I can take yeah, that one. I, I think you, you mentioned that a little bit ago at the beginning, but yeah, go ahead and jump in with that one. Yeah, so we're seeing there's different uh, drone-based LIDAR solutions out there. One of the ones we're seeing the best results with is the Regal system. Um, it's made in over in, I think, in Switzerland and Germany. Um, we're getting about, on a repeatable basis, one to three centimeter um, vertical and relative accuracy. There's a lot of components that go into that um, as far as with your GCPs, which are ground control points, how often they are placed, where they're placed, um, and also how the pilot is flying the job site. So there's a lot of um, variables that go into that, getting that accuracy. Um, there are other systems that are out there as well, um, geodetics and the Velodyne system that's closer to, it doesn't get as good as one to three centimeters. Um, that's closer to seven to 10 um, on a repeatable basis. Again, it's all the the accuracy is there as far as information. It's the the relative accuracy to Earth um, that that matters. So, but again, there's a lot of variables that go into that. Um, having somebody that's never flown a drone before go out and fly lidar, um, how they're turning the corners with the drone, the type of gimbals on the drones to carry that sensor. Um, there's a lot of things that go into that um, play. But if you have the the right people either in house um, or we could provide that training for you guys as a service. Um, or if you're using ARC to fly that service for you, um, you're going to have um, the licensed pilots with the experience of flying LIDAR and processing LIDAR data um, do that job for you. So um, that keeps getting better and better. Like again, uh, six to 12 months ago, it was probably closer to three to five centimeters. Um, so we're hoping the next six to 12 months that that accuracy will get even better um, down to your traditional uh, LIDAR uh, accuracies. Awesome, thanks. Um, another question we have is how much, how, how long in advance do we need to request services and how soon will the deliverable be available? Sure, yeah, good question. So the deliverables uh, are available, um, again, depending on what we're talking about, if it's uh, uh, video and uh, photography and pictures. Uh, that can be as, as a quick turnaround within uh, sometimes same day, um, but most of the time uh, uh, 24 hours is what we like to give our pilots. And again, that's also predicated to when they shoot. If, if they shoot later in the day, um, it may be that evening or, or you know next morning by the time you get that information. But they, they do need a little bit of time to vet the information and make sure it came back correctly. Um, for, uh, uh, for inquiries, and uh, getting someone on site. So what we do um, is we actually vet the information that you will send over from the actual site address. So we wanna make sure that obviously where whatever and wherever we're uh, deploying the drone, that it's not in any kind of no fly zone or there's no restrictions to fly, anything of that nature. So we, we ask for the address and a couple of other uh, questions to go along with that just to make sure we're providing the right uh, service for you. Uh, within, uh, after vetting that, um, uh, we can deploy somebody within about 24 to 48 hours. And again, that's predicated to your schedule as well. Um, there are some other factors that will tie into that, of course, as well, uh, things like weather. Um, so sometimes uh, we may say we'll, we'll be able to be there uh, on Friday, but uh, a storm has moved in, and uh, so we need to kick it to the next day or or following week, whatever that would entail. But uh, we do a great job at communicating that with with you as the client, so you'll always be informed up front of of that type of information coming back to you. Awesome, thanks, Adam. Um, we have a two part question. How do you deal with job sites that have a no-fly restriction? And um, is there an option to obtain temporary flight approval? And if so, how long is the process? Adam, do you want me to take this yeah, one? Do you want to cover that, Jeff? 
Yeah, so if, the, if there is a project that isn't a no-fly zone, typically um, with our network of pilots, um, we are lucky enough and able to find one or two that may have a waiver for that restricted airspace. Um, there are some airspaces, very difficult um, in the Washington, D.C. metro area, downtown New York, any downtown of any big city, um, just due to all the height of the buildings, the wind, um, the factors there. Um, but if you're, you know, typically if you're within five miles of an airport, um, an airspace waiver is required. Um, it's getting quicker and, and faster with the FAA now. There's the Lance um, airports, a lot of the unmanned um, tower airports, your kind of private jet airports. Um, we can now fly with the waiver and that request goes in by the pilot and within 24 to 48 hours. Um, they have the clearance to fly there. Um, there are sometimes flight restrictions. So if you are within that five miles of a, of a large airport, of O'Hare, for example, or um, and you apply for that waiver and you're flying under 200 feet or under 300 feet, um, you know, typically a waiver can be provided and that waiver is usually good for six months, 12 months. So um, if the waiver has to be applied for um, and not a Lance airport, it typically takes anywhere from three to six months. Um, but again, that is getting better. Um, the FAA is getting better with that. Um, and we're hoping in the next six months that it even gets even quicker to be almost with a 24 to 48 hour uh, waiver. So when there is restricted airspace in summary, this is a great question. Um, you can fly there, waiver is required. Um, and a lot of times, sometimes we do have pilots that have that waiver um, and can expedite that. And we're making the request, we can ensure that they have that already in place. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. Um, another question we have here is, what is the maximum range between the drone and the pilot? So how far away can they fly their, their aircraft, their machine? Uh, without the Beyond Visual Line of Sight waiver, the, they can fly up to one mile in either direction. Um, that's your visual line of sight. So the human eye can see on a good clear day about one mile they can see the drone so the the pilot has to be able to visualize that drone um, at all times uh, we do have also if you are if you do have pipeline projects infrastructure projects roadways power lines submission line type projects where you, you're flying a linear route um, we as, as precision hawk and can work with arc on that as well we do have that beyond visual line of sight waiver so at the moment uh, we are able to fly, our flight crew is able to fly four miles in either direction, so eight miles kind of round trip in a linear fashion. Um, mm -hmm. We have also applied for our extended visual line of sight, um, which can fly up to 25 miles in either direction. Um, so the technology is different for those type of situations. The aircraft, uh, we call it aircraft, has to communicate, and the pilot has to communicate to manned aircraft um, at all times. Obviously, if you can't see that drone, um, there can be your kind of your crop duster, your small aircraft, et cetera. Your pilot's not going to see that. You have to be aware of. So there's different sensors, et cetera, that need to go on to the beyond visual line of sight drone. Um, and we are working on a solution for that at the moment. But um, at the moment, it's not commercialized. Um, but the technology is there. So. Great. Um, here's an interesting question. Are the contour mappings accurate enough for a civil engineer to sign off on? And is this going to become a an industry regular? So with the contour mapping, um, again, as, as Jeff uh, predicated at the beginning, uh, when we cover that information, um, we're, we're certainly not uh, uh, surveying or, or surveying company. So the, um, the the company or the surveyor, or whoever would be requesting that that contour map, would certainly need to sign off on that at their own um, review. Um, so it certainly has to go through through you folks. Uh, whatever your review process is of that data and information, whatever your submittal process is and, and sign off procedures are, you would still have to do that, of, of course. So uh, as Jeff stated earlier, we're simply providing the technology to be used and, and the data from that technology for you to use. Um, uh, so hopefully that's that's clear um, in, in that we are not uh, getting into or, or portraying our, ourselves or, or the companies as, as surveyors or surveying. 
um, but it's simply the technology um, that we can provide for you uh, to be able to use that and, and you will have to do your your sign offs um, from that from that and, information and just to expand on that Adam you know we do have customers that have you know purchased the lidar units themselves that they have replaced their traditional survey for doing, you know, if it's for land developers and doing surveys, you know, pre-construction, pre-master planning of the communities and civil earthwork moving, they have, they are happy and the accuracies are getting that one to three centimeters is um, comparable to the traditional survey and, and they are happy to sign off on that and using that as their, as their way forward. So uh, if they've got, you know, five or 10 full-time survey crews, these guys can now um, capture data and get twice as much surveying done in their traditional time that they currently do it. So um, I think the technology keeps getting better. And um, it's again, shouldn't be looked at as a, a threat to the survey community. It should be looked at as a great tool that they can use to enhance what they're currently doing. And of course, you know, as Adam mentioned, like, you know, we're not surveyors. We're not saying we are. We're not saying the drone is providing us a survey grade it is providing survey grade if it's if that one to three centimeters is what the civil engineer is looking for. Definitely it's a survey grade map, right? Um, but that has to be on a case by case basis on that engineering company and or that surveyor. Awesome. Thanks, you guys. Uh, we have another attendee who wants to know about the pilots and how knowledgeable they are with the type of site services they're being asked um, to produce media for. So how familiar are they with construction sites and the type of assessments that would need to be done there? Sure, good question. Uh, so, uh, Jeff, I'll, I'll, I'll chime in and then if you want to add something, okay. go ahead. Um, so, we vet all of our pilots up front with the information provided by you as the client. So, and we make sure to match up the, the most appropriate and, and best fit pilot uh per per site so to speak so uh whether we're there to do um uh photos uh video uh and then uh, as we said earlier in, in the presentation any kind of lidar thermal that requires a, a special specialized pilot um which obviously knows the, the ins and outs of uh of the drone of, of the data and information to be collected and and of course the, the site and, and how they fly as well so we also ask for the client input um uh before we get to this, the the site and scene as well as far as uh how they would like us to fly um or if they have any special you know coordinates so to speak as to uh, if they want to, you know, north, northeast, west, um, uh, flying pattern, whatever that would be, uh, to be able to capture uh, their data correctly according to the client. So, um, yeah, our, our, our pilots are, are certainly vetted up front um, to understand uh, where we're going and what we're doing for the client. Jeff, if you want to cover anything else. I just said uh, if they're going on a live construction site, again, um, our pilots typically go through the safety training on site before they can actually fly it. That's a requirement. So, if, as you mentioned, they need to show up in steel toe boots and or have the hard hat and safety glasses and have the vest. Um, typically, the, the contractor provides that for us. Um, but they are they do go through the safety training as required, as all of your subcontractors do, and comply with whatever requirements you may have. So. Awesome. Thanks for all your guys' feedback on all these um, questions and answers. We did have a lot more, um, but as you guys can see, we've ran out of time today. We do have contact info. You guys can reach our marketing representative. Her name is Stacy Peck, and the slide that you should be seeing right now will have her contact information, and she's standing by to go ahead and answer all your questions. Adam, if you want to go ahead and change to the next slide. Um, go ahead and reach out to her. She can give you all of the pricing information that you guys are asking about. Um, if you guys have questions about demonstrations on site or anything that's a little bit more specific to your, um, your use case, Stacy can definitely help you get those questions answered. Her contact 
is on the screen and we will also be sending out a follow-up email that will include a recording of this session so you guys will have her information um, at your fingertips we appreciate all of you guys attending thank you adam and to our partner precision hawk and jeff freund for coming today and speaking to everyone and we'll go ahead and end this session thank you for attending Gracias.